Hello, Keith Rucker here at VintagePachinia.org. Guys, uh, today I uh, got a little quick project we're going to be working on, uh, trying to repair a piece of brass that goes on a steam whistle. And this was actually sent in to me by a viewer. I want to know if I could help them out with it. And they have provided the part that needs to be repaired as well as some uh, brass stock here. Uh, this is just some cast of uh, bright brass material that we're going to be cutting a part out of and hopefully welding, brazing, whatever you want to call it, back together. I guess this will technically be bra uh, welding because we will be putting together similar materials, but we'll be using uh, the brass as a filler, but we'll be actually welding the brass material. So let me zoom in here, show you what we got, and uh, we'll get started on this project. So this is the bowl off of a uh, Crosby steam whistle. And uh, the part that we're gonna be working on is actually this piece that screws in the front of this. And what this is, is this is a, uh, basically where the valve goes in uh, through this hole right here. There's a little stem that sticks out. There's a spring that loads behind this that uh, basically keeps that whistle valve closed and uh, there's a handle that goes in here, a little lever that you pull on and it pivots here on this uh, uh, fulcrum right here that pushes the valve stem in, opens the, the valve, lets the steam come up through the whistle. So the problem we've got here is, as you can see, um, there's two little ears that go here that that uh, lever goes in between and one of those ears has broken off so we want to try to repair that that's going to be uh, the job of the day so again you can kind of see it there um, what we're going to be doing and what he sent along with me was this piece of brass right here uh, this is actually from a casting it looks like it was a plug or something but this is the right thickness uh, right here. This cross section is the right thickness and I'm going to cut out that missing part out of this uh, piece of brass and uh, we're going to see if we can weld it back together and get a good joint there that will hold it in place where we can put this whistle or he can put this whistle back in use. So uh, step one here is going to be going and actually trying to cut out this part out of this piece of brass um, and then we're going to see if we can weld it back together. I'm going to probably TIG it. Um, I'm going to be honest with you, I've had limited success uh, doing brass like this. I think we can do this all right, uh, but we're going to give it a try. All else fails, we'll probably just end up having to make a whole new part, which will probably entail making a pattern, having it cast, and then machining it out. But I'm hoping that we can do the repair rather than have to go to the trouble of making a whole new new part here. So that's the game plan. Let's see if we can cut that blank out of this uh, piece of uh, sacrificial material here and uh, repair this part. Let's get at it. Well, I just zipped the uh, end of this off over on the do-all bandsaw didn't show that step, but we did. And I think what we're gonna do is just try to roughly trace out the uh, outline here of uh, the piece that we need to fit in here. I'm just using a Sharpie pen and using the original side here as a guide. And we need to basically get that shape right there cut out of this and see if we can weld that in there. I'm going to go back over to the do all and see if we can kind of roughly cut that out. Over here at the do all bandsaw and this is what we're going to use to try to cut this out with. This is ideal for this uh, cutting metal so let's go in here and see if we can get it, this uh, shape roughly cut out. All right let's uh See if we can nibble this out.
I'm going to take that over to the sander grinder and just kind of clean up those outside edges. But uh, I think we got a blank to work with there. Well, there we go, guys. I did a little sanding on it over on my belt sander. Kind of cleaned up that roughness on the outside of it a little bit. And also just kind of roughly ground it to shape. And it's, you know, it's actually just a little bit larger than the one we'll be matching here. But I did that on purpose so that, uh, you know, after we get this thing welded, I can kind of file them to, to match the profile on one side to the other. So I got a little bit of extra material. Now, we need to get this set up to weld it. Um, there is a gap in there. That's a quarter of an inch. So I've got a piece of quarter inch steel here that I'm basically going to sandwich in between there. And we'll just clamp that in place on top of that and have it ready to weld. So I'm going to get over here to my vise and uh, get that clamped. And uh, we'll see if we can get this thing welded. Over at my vise, I did put my little copper soft jaws in here just so we don't damage this piece of brass. These uh, hard jaws will really... Uh, uh, mark it up if you're not careful and so we'll just take this spacer put in here I'm gonna lay uh, that on top of it and I've just got a little C clamp here and we're gonna carefully clamp all this together and uh, we'll take it out and just look at it yeah I need to Adjust it just a little bit. This needs to go. Check that out. I think that's going to be it. I'm going to go ahead and clamp that real good right there. All right, I like that. I'm just looking down the front of it here to make sure I got it lined up top to bottom and everything else where it's more or less in line with this other side. It's clamped in place and uh, we got a little lap joint there. I'm gonna see if I can use the TIG and uh, weld that back together. Let me go get set up for welding and we'll see what we can do here. I've got my TIG torch over here set on. I don't have my amps up real high. Hoping I can keep the heat down on this a little bit. Let's uh, see what happens. I'm just kind of going back and forth on this and trying to bring these two materials together without melting too much out here. I'll see if I can get some filler and try to fill in these ends a little bit. So, just a couple of little observations here before we go any further. This uh, material that we're putting in here is a piece of cast brass. This is a piece of cast brass. Um, he was trying real hard to try to get very similar materials, and I think they're similar, but I can also tell they're different. I was noticing when I was uh, TIG welding or brazing, whatever you want to call this, uh, that the material over here was melting at a lower temperature than the material up here. So uh, I guess technically this will be brazing because it is this similar materials. Now the original plan was was he was going to give me, I was going to basically uh, cut up some of this uh, brass here and use it as a filler rod, but because it's melting at different temperatures, I think I'm just going to come in here with uh, a piece of silicon bronze. Uh, it's going to be a very close color match, but this is actually made for TIG brazing and um, I just feel a bit better about using it. 
Uh, we'll see. But I'm going to try to kind of fill in a little bit on these corners. I think we got a pretty good uh, weld across the, the, the middle section, but I do want to try to get these uh, ends a little bit better. So I'm going to try to get that up to a melting temperature and then just add a little bit of this material in. All right, we're going to try again with a little bit of a low heat. Bring the temperature up rather slowly. A little bit of a run on that back side, but I got extra material in there. That's the main thing I wanted that we can uh, hopefully grind out and uh, get this looking a little bit better. All right, I'm going to let this cool down and we'll take a look at it. All right, so here we are. We got it cooled down. Uh, the piece is in there. This is a little bit thinner than the original, but that's what he provided me with to work with. And uh, it is a little bit larger across the top. I can easily, I'm going to go back there on, on the belt sander and kind of massage that. The, the, it flares in pretty nicely to match down here. It just needs to kind of round the top off. Also, um, I'm going to do a little bit of massage in here on the surface to get that cleaned up. But... Uh, I feel like it's pretty good. Um, I'd love to get down inside that channel and kind of weld the inside, but there's just not a really good way of doing that. Uh, yeah, let me go clean this thing up on the sander and see what it looks like, and we'll we'll go from there and decide what to do, if, if anything, next. Well, I'm pretty happy with that. Like I said, uh, you can tell this uh, material that we put in here is not quite as thick as the original, but it's pretty close. It appears to be welded on there pretty good. I did uh, kind of get over here and try to match the radius on both sides. It's pretty close. Uh, if he wants to fine tune any more, he's more than welcome to, but I think it's a pretty good match. Last thing we need to do here is uh, put a hole through there, a quarter inch hole. We'll go over to the drill press, put that in there. And I think we're going to call this part done, and hopefully that repair will last and hold up for him. Over here at the drill press, we got a quarter inch uh, drill bit in here. Got a piece of uh, wood that we'll kind of use as a backing plate here. That brass is nice and soft. Take my time and uh, drill down through it. There we go. One through hole. Just use this little Noga tool here to lightly deburr. That hole now on the inside. This is another little Noga deburring tool. This one allows me to kind of come up through the hole and uh, go around that hole on the bottom on that blind side. I don't know if you can see that or not, but that that's got the inside of that hole deburred. Now we'll reinstall this piece back onto the bowl of the whistle. It just uh, screws in place and tightens up. And what I'm going to do is uh, 
I'm going to put this back over in my vise and we will get a piece of brass and just kind of bump that around until it gets nice and tight and uh, back in its position. All right, guys, we're going to call this done. Um, hopefully this repair will hold up. I'll be honest with you. I, like I said, I wish I, I really could get down in the root down here on the inside and braise it, but there's just not really a practical way of doing it. Um, I wish that this was a little bit thicker than what it is. I think that would have helped a little bit, but hopefully it will uh, do what he needs for it to do and get this uh, nice little Crosby whistle uh, back where it can be used. I don't know if this is one he's planning on putting back into hard use, or whether this is more of a collection where it'll be on static display, occasionally blown. Um, you know, I think that in the latter case, it'll probably hold up fine. If this is going, you know, on a steam engine or a locomotive or something like that, it's going to get a hard use. I would be worried that that ear may not hold up as well as it needs to. But anyway, pretty cool. Crosby uh, Steam and Gauge, Steam Gauge and Valve Company, Boston, uh, patented January 30th, 1877. You can see the remnants. I believe this is the serial number 6116 is what that looks like. I don't know, that may be that last number, maybe, yeah, I think it's a six. Yeah, 6116, I think is what that is. So we'll get this packed up, headed back to him, and hopefully it will serve him well. Uh, not an ideal repair, but hopefully good enough. And uh, if worse comes to worse, if this doesn't hold up, my next game plan would be to see if we can recast that part. Uh, it will be a challenge, uh, mainly because the way the threads are on this thing, it has to end up straight up and down. Um, that's going to be a challenge to machine it where it comes out right. But, yeah, we'll, we'll see. Maybe, maybe if we have to, uh, we can do that if needed. All right, we're going to pack it up and send it back. There we go, fun little repair. Like I said, I hope it holds up and does what he wants for it to do. Um, I think it will. It's uh, not an ideal solution to the problem, but hopefully it's a sufficient a solution to the problem and hopefully gets get some back up and going here so we'll get this headed back his way and hope you enjoyed the process and uh, with that guys that's gonna be a wrap as always thank you so much for watching please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already those thumbs up and comments greatly appreciated uh, hit that bell icon to get notifications when new videos are posted uh, big huge thank you to all the supporters out there the site through patreon and paypal etc uh greatly appreciate what you do and we couldn't do everything that we do without your help and guys with that we'll catch you on the next video again thanks for watching